The current generation Suzuki Jimny JB74 range started out as a budget performer, but the price has increased over the time of its sale. No doubt that has to do with the huge demand for the new generation Jimny, which could anecdotally see a waiting time that stretches as long as 16 months. Suzuki has significantly increased the waiting time, but it is possible it decided to opt for this new version over the more complete model that was above it. The version we're talking about and pushing for in this review is the new Suzuki Jimny Lite 2022, which cuts down on the existing model and as a result has some interesting exceptions. Does that make it a less attractive off-roader? Or is it still the king of the compact 4WD? Does it represent good value for the price? What features are included? Honestly, it should be cheaper. But part of the reason this generation of Jimny is so popular is that there is no rival at a price that comes close to this much capability on offer today. The GWM tank range might get over it soon, but until then, have a Land Rover Defender 90, Jeep Wrangler 2-door, or a number of second-hand options. Heck, even the previous generation Jimnys are getting at the time of writing. There are some major omissions from this Jimny light model that relegated it to a no-frills example. Light, yes. Light on the specifications? Yes to that too. And it's available with a 5-speed manual transmission only, paying 3,000 more than it would have for a model with better specs when it launched in 2018. And the car is now more expensive than it was when it launched, there have been some pretty hefty reductions made to help it meet that lower but not that low price point either. Gone are the 7.0-inch touchscreens with satellite navigation then replaced by the 9.0-inch screens without satellite navigation on the 2022 model due to a lack of microchips, and with that there's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto just a double-din CD player and AM, FM radio with more on how bad Bluetooth is in the interior below. There's also manual air conditioning instead of climate control, get 15-inch steel wheels instead of alloy on the more expensive models and you even lose the interior lights, 12-volt outlet in the trunk, fog lamps, and LED headlights. Light running halogen lamp. The headlights, at least, have an auto on-off function, and auto high beam as well. We'll lose color coding on the outside, the mirrors and door handles are made of unfinished black plastic, and while they still feature an electric adjustment, they don't fold like high-end models. What else isn't there? The reversing camera is the final piece of the puzzle and while it could be a potentially life-saving safety technology, the Jimny is still fairly easy to measure when parked. The color choice for the Jimny light is white as seen here which comes at no extra cost, while the metallic paint finish jungle green and medium gray wool and more if you want two black roof paint colors in chiffon ivory, kinetic yellow or brisk blue. As for accessories, there are several to choose from directly from Suzuki, including an improved stereo sound system, different grille, underbody guards, nudge bars, mud covers, floor mats, front and rear diff guards, different alloy wheels, rack kits roof with bike carrier or snowboard, ski, surfboard rack, and tow bar kit. Anything interesting about the design? Still cute, right? I'd say in these specs, it really looks truer to its roots than the higher end models, with its yellowish halogen headlights and uncomplicated exterior finishes that make it seem here for a good time. The halogen headlights aren't quite as good as the projector LEDs in the more expensive models, and the white paint finish really draws attention to the inside of the wheel arches, which aren't coated in any version of the Jimny. But still compact and cute, it's hard to stay angry or even mad at the appearance of this little legend. Size-wise, it goes 3,645mm nose to tail at a wheelbase of 2,250mm, while it is just 1,645mm wide and 1,725mm tall. Small enough for even the sharpest bush tracks. Those compact dimensions keep the interior quite tight, with the four-seater Jimny most likely considered a two-seater SUV with a large trunk.
Also, the side-mounted tailgate means it won't have anywhere to hide in the rain. So maybe that's why seeing so many Jimny models equipped with awnings on the side or in the back. Luckily, despite the stupid design hey, can critique it, I have a JB43 and hate the tailgate, it's lightweight and since the car body is short and wide it doesn't really matter when parked. If you have children, the rear seat can accommodate two seats due to the dual ISOFIX and top tether points. And if the kids aren't in the capsule, it's probably okay with the space back there, but anyone taller than average is going to have a bad time. It's quite tight, and not very comfortable other than the ditched infotainment system, and manual AC controls, not much has changed between this version and the more expensive version. To be honest, the Bluetooth-enabled CD player system installed is pretty awful, and the two-speaker sound system isn't great either. I would suggest if interested in Jimmy and concerned with music quality an exterior upgrade could be an easy thing for this car unlike the more expensive versions get a better stereo this is the same two-speaker setup. The stereo controls take a bit of learning to figure out the menus for the system, and they're not at all as intuitive as the touchscreen. That's why the touchscreen is the ultimate solution. Because good. At least this stereo head unit has buttons and knobs. The front seats offer good adjustment and comfort, although an armrest console would be a nice aftermarket upgrade to get one with a built-in USB port which is pretty neat. There's a nice door pocket for magazines and that's it. A cup holder on the floor console between the seats, and not much storage other than a small cubby in front of the shifter and another on top of the glove box. Another thing I didn't like was the absence of a digital speedometer. Can't pick one on the TFT information screen and hate it. Might also want to consider that the steering wheel only has tilt adjustment no range adjustment, and it is a hard plastic tiller nor is it covered in leather and there are hard plastic elbow pads on the doors. At least the upholstery is soft, right? 